Hey everyone, Jason Schabert here of the M0A Online Ground School. In this video, we're gonna break down the near miss that happened at the Austin Bergstrom Airport. Hey, M0A Nation and M0A Online Ground School members, Jason Shepard here. Welcome into our brand new April Accident Analysis Series. All this month, we're going to be looking at accidents in professional aviation, general aviation, corporate, all over the place. We'll be looking at accidents, near accidents, in this case, a near miss, and we'll be seeing what can we learn from this. I want to be very, very clear. This series is not to point fingers at who did what right, who did what wrong. Uh, this, this series is to learn. We are going to talk about some accidents later in this series that involve fatalities. And I, I'll always share this. I hate talking about accidents that involve fatalities. But I also believe we'd be doing those pilots involved in those fatalities a disservice if we don't learn from them. So this isn't, let's not blow up the comments with pointing fingers and everything else. This is, we are life lifters and we're here to learn and make aviation a safer place. That's what we're really after. Hey, speaking of making aviation a safer place, all this year, we are giving away just amazing gifts. Uh, last month, you saw we gave away the iPad. The month before that, gave away our check ride books. This month, if you head over to m0acontest.com, you'll see it's a whole new contest. So you can sign up again if you didn't win any of the things so far. Go to m 0 contest, sign up again. This month, since it's an accident analysis and talking in-flight emergencies, we're giving away a survival kit that myself, Magda, and the m 0 team are gonna really make for you. We're gonna put some amazing things in there. I'll be showing that kind of throughout this series as well. Come in a nice uh, floating Pelican case uh, as well. I'll show you my survival kit so you can kind of see it. It'll be very similar to that, but we're gonna hand pick these items, carbon monoxide detector, this kind of stuff. Handpick these items for you in this little survival kit. And not just a survival kit, but having a carbon monoxide detector makes you safer in the airplane. So a lot of cool things for you to add to the flight bag, add to the airplane. I keep mine under my seat, literally. So if I'm getting out of that airplane, I reach under my seat and it's coming with me as I, as I exit that airplane. So m0acontest.com to check that out. Also, I talked a lot about the online ground school members. Hey, online ground school members. If you're, if you're a ground school member, all our webinars this month, we're gonna be breaking down different aviation accents as well, so make sure you don't miss those. If you're not a ground school member, you go to m0atrial.com to check that out and learn more. I wanna honor your time. Let's go ahead, let's play this animation of this near miss, and then we're gonna come back here and we're gonna break it down. Austin Tower, FedEx 1432 Heavy, passing 5.4 for that. Cat 3, ILS, 1-8 left. FedEx 1432 Heavy, Austin Tower, 1-8 left, RVR, touchdown, 1,400, midpoint 600, roll out 1,800, 1-8 left, clear to land. Clear to land, 1-8 left, FedEx 1432 Heavy. Tower, Southwest 708, we're short of 1-8 left, so we're ready. Southwest 708 Austin Tower, runway 18 left, RVI 1200, midpoint 600, roll out 1600. Flight heading 170, runway 18 left, clip for takeoff, traffic 3 mile final is a heavy 767. Okay, 170, clip for takeoff, 18 left, copy the traffic, Southwest 708. Tower confirm, uh, FedEx 1432 Heavy, clear to land on 18 left. FedEx 1432 Heavy, that is affirmative, sir. 18 left, you are clear to land. Traffic department, Project Route 737. Roger. Southwest Hills are confirm on the road. Roll on now. Southwest abort. FedEx is on the go. Clear 
Southwest 708, Roger, you can turn right when able. Negative. Thanks, 1432. Climb, maintain 3000. We need to turn left heading 080. Wind, turn to 080 3000. FedEx, 1432 heavy. Southwest 70, you can turn uh, left heading 170. 170, FedEx, 1432, turn left heading 360. Contact approach on the 125.32. 2532, left 360. FedEx, 1432 heavy. Southwest 7 you can contact departure. 708, sir. And FedEx 1432 is exiting Lima. FedEx 1432, heavy, roger. Report clear the runway. You can join Bravo and uh, contact Ground on Point 9. We'll join Bravo, Ground Point 9. FedEx 1432 is heavy, it's clear of the runway. This 1432 heavy, Roger, sir. You have our apologies, we appreciate your professionalism. Thank you. So as pilots, what can we do? Right now here, like I opened up, we are not here to place blame. Instead, we're here to learn from it. We're here to find ways to improve. So let's, let's break this down a little bit further. First off, the weather. It's a quarter mile of visibility. It's 200 foot ceilings and we're in freezing fog. This is like a day for me to make a cup of coffee and just, just hang out reading a good book. Like that's, that's what I do on that kind of weather. But when you fly professionally, you've got to go sometimes. Now the airport's not very busy. This is 6 a.m. in the morning. Let me give you some timestamps here and let's break this down a little bit further here. So FedEx was cleared to land 1-8 left at approximately 6.34 a.m. By the way, you heard them call out. They were 5.4 miles out. Just four minutes later, Southwest is cleared for takeoff on 1-8 left. FedEx, the controller reports, is now on a three-mile final. Now, you've got to kind of do the math in your head here as you're thinking about it. These are big airplanes. Three-mile final is not a lot of spacing because at around 6.40 in the morning, Southwest is rolling. FedEx initiates its go-around um, with Southwest rolling down the runway as well. Now, when you hear FedEx say Southwest abort, and you may not have caught that. I I've seen a lot of people talk about this on the internet. They say, oh, they were told to abort and they didn't. Listen closely, go back and listen. It was FedEx who said Southwest abort. FedEx knew they were going around, knew Southwest was taking off, but could not see them. That's a scary situation to be in. It was FedEx that told Southwest to abort, not the controller. Now, you hear Southwest say negative. Southwest wasn't saying negative to FedEx. The controller, realizing the situation, told Southwest, hey, make a right turnout when able. And Southwest said, negative. I'm not, if you see, they had barely left the ground, make a right turn able. I can't see anything over there. I know there's the airport over there, but I'm not turning at 100 feet in these kinds of conditions, right? They had just barely left the ground. Now let's look at this from each pilot's perspective. From Southwest's perspective, technically, once I'm cleared for takeoff, that's my piece of pavement, right? That's my pavement, I'm cleared for takeoff. However, they were in low visibility. So, and they did everything right. In lower visibility, they were slower to taxi out there, kind of double checking all their instruments, everything else. They did the right thing. I would have done the same thing. I'd have been very just mindful of how I taxied out there, making sure everything was good. What could they have done? Well, were they listening to tower? I would imagine, we didn't really cut that down and you hear, they make the radio call up, I'd imagine they were listening to tower at that time. They could have refused their takeoff clearance when they heard FedEx was five miles out. Uh, and then they gave a, uh, that's when they called up. Then they were cleared to takeoff saying, hey, a FedEx heavy is on a three mile final. They could have said, you know what? We're just gonna hold short and let them have it here real quick. 
what's, what's another two, three minutes uh, at this point? So I'd ask you, is ATC rushing you to do something? Uh, two, three, Mike Zulu, uh, traffic three mile final, uh, immediate takeoff, runway three, six, or no delay, takeoff, runway three, six. Have you ever heard that? I'm like, oh, no delay, I need, I need to rush, I need to hustle here. Or even on landing, uh, two, three, Mike Zulu, make, make a short approach, I've got a Learjet on a five mile final, and you're doing your best, you haven't done a short approach in a while, but you're doing your best to make a short approach. Are you comfortable? Is your skill level um, a constraint with what you're trying to do to crunch it into this time? Does that make sense? Let's look at this now from FedEx perspective here. Now you're dealing with low visibility, you're in freezing fog, um, you're, you're shooting a Cat 3 approach as you saw, and they were concerned with spacing. Did you catch how they double checked with ATC to confirm they had a landing clearance? You see, I would argue that's kind of a passive aggressive way of saying, I heard you just clear Southwest to take off, but I know we're three miles out and we're probably at three miles out, we're probably at you know, 900 feet. We're pretty close to touchdown here. That was a passive aggressive way of saying, don't, did you forget about us out here, controller? That's what was really happening. What could they have done? Knowing this is happening, could they have gone around earlier? You know, uh, FedEx did make a good decision to go around. I mean, they legally had to. They didn't see the runway when they got there. But going around sooner might have reduced that close call. You see, you should never be afraid to go around if an approach is unstable or safety concerns exist for this flight. In fact, the stats show pilots are hesitant to make go arounds. Did you know the landing phase? If you look at all the accidents, and we have around 900 to 1,000 accidents every single year. Did you know the majority of those are landing accidents that could have been reduced with a go-around? This is all because go-arounds, they're just not done frequently. We look at go-arounds as like an admission of my failure. Oh, I goofed that up, I'm going around. I want you to change your perspective and instead think a go-around is an admission of your great decision-making. We're not doing enough go-arounds. Uh, we have to practice. I remember working with student pilots, our, our learners. Go around, oh, but Jace, I really wanted to land. I'm sorry, we need to practice go arounds just as much. You have to have the mindset that a go around can and may happen at any time. You know, this reminds me in a different way, uh, a lot of Tenerife, which by the way, the 46th anniversary was just uh, the 27th of March. March 27th, 1977, Tenerife. Uh, until September 11th, it was the largest aviation disaster. We'll link to that down below. We did an entire accident analysis series on that. I wanna say it was last year, maybe two years ago. Um, if you to check out there. There is so much we can learn. Listen, there were no fatalities in this. Um, I love how the, the ground controller told FedEx, thanks for your professionalism. And he just said, thank you. FedEx pilot seemed unfazed by it. I wouldn't have been unfazed by it. My blood pressure was raising just watching that simulation there for a bit, realizing that was real. So again, what can we learn from this? That's why I wanna hear from you down in the comments down below. What was your biggest takeaway from all of this? I know this is a longer video. This series is gonna have some longer videos in it because we really need to tell the story. Go back, put yourself in Southwest shoes, put yourself in FedEx's shoes, and leave me a comment down below with what did you learn from this and how does this apply to general aviation? Once again, uh, to enter to win that kit, head over to m0acontest.com so you can check that out. We'll be doing a big live stream at the end of the month as well, giving that away and doing a live accident analysis. Again, I just love being live with you all, the interaction, everything else. So listen, have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.